Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texans Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Uh, please join me with uh, Mr. Kidd leading us in the invocation and Mr. Moore in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would like to, uh, please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just uh, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, we just uh, pray specifically for those that are, are here tonight. And just thank you for those teachers, those instructors, those that are with our district, Lord, and their hearts for our students and their hearts for service and the impact that those leaders on those campuses have Lord we just thank you and we ask for your directions and guidance and strength dear Lord we uh, specifically thank you for the students that are here tonight and uh, just the example that they've been in representing this district and we just pray Lord that you be with the students throughout our district as we finish strong this spring and just we we ask for uh, just your uh, your protection Hey God, specifically for tonight, also we, we ask for guidance and direction in the business to be done, and just thank you for the opportunity uh, to gather here tonight and just watch over this meeting, help it be productive. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor and protect this flag. I pledge allegiance to the people of Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kidd and Mr. Moore. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Dr. Stockton for our awards and recognition. Great. We're going to start out. Uh, this is going to be an exciting evening, I think, for everybody in the room. We're going to start out tonight. Um, inviting Mr. Colshan up to the podium, principal of the Woodlands High School, to introduce our coach who will introduce our recipients. Mrs. Bush, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here to recognize a very special group of young ladies. Uh, but before we do that, I want to thank you for the opportunities that you continue to provide our students, both academically and extracurricularly. It all works together and provides a well-rounded school experience for our students. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce the Texas 6A State Coach of the Year, Kent Kirchner. Thank you very much. It's truly an honor to be here. I'd like to thank the Lord for bringing my wife and our family here 18 years ago. And my wife is right over here. If she'd please stand up. I don't want to waste too much time here, but we're coming up on our 35th anniversary. That's pretty amazing to me and other people Aww. that know me. <laughs> Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our, our ladies here that did just an amazing job this year at the, at the Texas State High School Swimming and Diving Championship. Valerie Ann Staffelt, please stand up there and come right over here. And Lily, Lily Nordman, Emily Reese, Lucy Nordman, Caitlin, I can't think of Rainier, Caitlin Rainier, Vivian Yu. Carson Fields, Sydney Rycraft, Peyton Neff, and our assistant coach, Katie Tom. These, these young ladies, just to give you a brief description of what happened at the state meet, uh, we talked about before the meet started, I said that every spot's going to be important. Every point's important. And going down to the 400 freestyle relay, which is the last event, we were tied. And whoever wins the last relay wins the meet. And I knew we had it, didn't we? <laughs> anyway, they set a new state record in that relay, too, at the end. Um, wow. 
And I also would like to thank Mr. Colshan for being one of my best assistant coaches I've ever had at the school. <laughs> and the one thing he told me after we took our plunge into the water after the state meet was over, he came up and his first words to me were, boy, this is cold. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, uh, this is our state championship team. Um, and the next thing I'm going to recognize is our state championship yeah. record. I'm sorry? Oh, wow. for your team. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. So, cut, cut in whenever you like it. I don't want to take it. over. Just no. Cut in whenever you like it. I just, we want to present this plaque on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Stockton to the Woodlands High School Girls Swimming Team 2017 6A State Champions. We say congratulations to every one of you. Next, our, our next uh, item on the agenda here is the 200 medley relay uh, state record holder, record holders, excuse me. Uh, Lucy Nordman, step forward. <laughs> Carson Fields, step forward. Emily Reese, step forward. And Valerie Ann Staffelt, step forward, please. They actually broke the state records twice. They did it in the prelims, and then they came back and did it again in the finals. But it only counts one time. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Leave no doubt. You're all great record breakers in our league anyway. Again, we just want to present this reward uh, award on behalf of the Woodlands High School Girls 200-yard medley relay team. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Stockton, I'm, I'm sorry, but you said to keep it short. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, the 400 freestyle relay state record holder uh, set a new state record in the 400 freestyle relay at that last event. Uh, Lucy Nordman, Emily Reese, Lily Nordman, and Peyton Neff. 400 freestyle relay state record. Trying to yeah. read without my glasses, That's but right. I'm doing pretty good. Marms are long enough. <laughs> the Woodlands High School girls 400 yard freestyle relay team. Congratulations, 6 8 state champions. We're proud of you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We're getting there. We got one more. <laughs> Two. Okay. Well, it goes to the same person. Uh, Next, we have a state record holder, a state record breaker in the 50 freestyle and state champion, and also the 100 backstroke state champion. She broke two state records in those two events, too. Yeah. Lucy Nordman. appreciate the board recognizing us at this time. Uh, that's basically, I'm done right now. Okay. Unless you want me to go on. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. 
Congratulations. 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 <laughs> Miss Godfrey, Godfrey, sorry. Has anyone registered to address the board? No. All right. Um, if no one opposes, we're going to actually move Thank item you. nine uh, up on our agenda to before the consent agenda. So, item nine A. Name principal of Anderson Elementary School, Dr. Stockton. All right. Well, thank you very much. This is always a, a joy and a pleasure for me to recommend principals to the board uh, for their approval. And uh, this is not done without a lot of thought. And, and you know, throughout the year, we look at different positions. We look at different people. Um, we put a lot of thought into it. Sometimes it also involves transfers of people and, mm -hmm. and those types of things. Um, but I am really, really excited about uh, what we have tonight, or who we have tonight to present to you. The first one is naming the principal of Anderson Elementary School, and I am very uh, pleased to recommend Laura Kionis, who's currently the assistant principal at Patterson Elementary School. So I uh, present her for your approval. I move approval. Second. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I feel like in the Oscars, so don't play the music, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it is with great joy that I stand before you to thank you for the honor uh, of this opportunity. My parents and siblings couldn't be here today, but my best friend, husband, love of my life, and Carl ISD teacher is here with me, Cesar Delgado, so he can stand up. has loved and supported me every step of the way in my career and dreams. Also, my mentor, Mr. Lozano, and his wife are here today, tonight to support me. Somewhere right no here. <laughs> <laughs> he is to thank for molding me into the leader I have become and aspired to be. I'm also grateful to be joined by my really good friends who have become my core family. Two years ago, I exchanged my geometry class with high school students in Juarez for a classroom full of five-year-old students <laughs> here in Conroy SD at Anderson Elementary. As scary as it sounds, I survived the whole year and succeeded the second one. Then I joined one of the best fourth grade teams in the district. It was an intimidating moment. I was going to be teaching with great teachers some with more than 30 years of experience, but I was successful with their unconditional love and unwavering guidance. Later, I became the instructional campus coach. Leaving the classroom was tough, but thanks to the teacher's trust in me, I was able to grow as a leader. Sometime after, I became a district math coach in Patterson's AP. And again, it was a scary moment because I was leaving Anderson, my house. I was able to succeed thanks to the love and support of my dear Patterson family. Today should be another scary moment, mm -hmm. but it is not. I'm going back home, confident of great team success to come. I will try my very best doing what Anderson taught, taught me. If you do things with love and passion, you will succeed. Thank you very much.
Moving to, <laughs> I uh, am equally as excited to recommend to you uh, Natalie Buckley, who's currently the assistant principal at Burnham Woods, to be the new principal at Burnham Woods. Move for approval. Thank Motion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Congratulations. Board President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, I would like to first of all thank you for this opportunity to serve as principal of Burnham Woods Elementary. I would also like to thank my family members who are here, my husband of almost 25 years, uh, Mike, my parents, Debbie and Tommy, and one, I can't look at them, <laughs> don't look at them, and one of my boys, Blake, my other son, is off at school this week working really hard, so he couldn't be here today. I started out in Conroe ISD as a second grade teacher, a fourth grade teacher, and I've had the privilege of being at Burnham Woods for the last five years. I'm very eager <laughs> and excited to continue to work with an amazing staff and school community. And as an instructional leader, I pledge to continue to foster a culture that's going to um, s expect high levels of academic achievement, value those meaningful relationships, and of course support the core values of CISD. So I look forward to the challenge that lies ahead and once again just thank you for this opportunity to serve CISD in this capacity. Thank you. Mark. Okay, moving to um, our next rec my next recommendation. This is for Bosman Intermediate School. I'm <laughs> we already have one vote. Yeah. Uh, I am very uh, pleased and honored to recommend Amber de Beaumont, who's currently an assistant principal there, to be the principal. All right. <laughs> they they uh, haven't voted yet. So, <laughs> so moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? All right, congratulations. <laughs> President Bush, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Stockton, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be in a principal in a district that I love with all my heart and have called home for the past eight years. Tonight is a time to celebrate not just myself, but the people who love and support me year-round. My husband, Trey, is not only the love of my life, but he is my biggest fan and someone that never lets a day pass without making me smile. <laughs> our greatest accomplishment is our son, Cooper, future Conroe Tiger Class of 2033. <laughs> He chose Mickey Mouse tonight and Grandma instead of coming. He is my heart and my life goal is for him to always be proud to call me his mommy. Thank you to my dad, brother Aaron, and his girlfriend Kayla for coming tonight. Their support means the world to me. My Kimple family, Chris, Lucy, Emma, and George, the greatest people a girl like me could ask for. They not only bring immense joy to our lives, but they love and support us endlessly. Lucy, thank you for being my best friend, sister, and for always believing in me. Mr. Lowe, 
um, otherwise known as Mr. Mike Mill. Um, he is a dear friend of mine, and he's also my partner in mentoring three boys. And so I really want to thank him for all of his support. A special thank you to all the principals I've worked for in CISD, Dr. Curtis Mill, Dr. Mark Orderly, Gail Chairman, Tasha Smith, and Bethany Mixed. I don't, I don't think the lineup gets any better than that. <laughs> Dr. Curtis Mill, thank you for hiring me and giving me the opportunity to be part of the CISD family. You've believed in me since day one, and I admire you as a person and a leader. Thank you for mentoring me and helping me grow as a leader. I just want to let everyone in this room know that dreams do come true. Started out as a freckle-faced little girl from Bird City, Texas, who had a dream of going to Texas A&M and being an educator one day. The most amazing thing about that is, yes, I'm an Aggie. <laughs> but the most amazing thing about that is, every single day I try to instill in children that dreams do come true. I am overjoyed and honored to be the principal of Boston Intermediate. I promise to always work hard, be humble, challenge myself and others, cherish every day, and have fun. I will never let a day pass without all Bozeman children and staff members knowing they are supported and cared for. Thank you so much for me allowing the opportunity to help children and teachers be their best day in and day out. Go Broncos! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, I am also very excited to uh, recommend the new principal for Travis Intermediate School, and that is Sharita Smith, who's currently an assistant principal at Ford Elementary School. All right. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. All right. All those in favor? All opposed? Congratulations. <laughs> Good evening uh, to President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I am so honored and very blessed to be named the next principal of Travis Intermediate School. I look forward to serving the students, parents, community, and school staff. This is a tremendous opportunity, and I will not disappoint or let you down. Um, I really couldn't do the work that I do without the help and support of my wonderful family. Here tonight is my husband, Darius, my daughter, Taylor, my mother, Charlotte, my mother-in-law, Phyllis, my cousin, Sharon, and my aunt, Cheryl, and my uncle, Derek. Thank you so much for your love and your support. I would, I would also like to thank, this is my second year in CISD, and so I would like to thank my principal, Mrs. Gorman, for giving me that opportunity from an outsider to come in to this awesome district. And um, I would like to really thank her and for her support and uh, my Ford family. I really appreciate you all so much. So CISD, y'all have me now. Been in two years. I'm here to stay. <laughs> Many thanks. Before we move forward with our agenda, I do want to say again, congratulations to all of you. I'm sure you want to go celebrate. You are welcome to leave or you're welcome to stay, but now's the opportunity if you want to slide away. <laughs> Where's the party? <laughs> the rest of the meeting is not quite as fun. I'll be late. <laughs> we are at the board. Pretty much. Congratulations, Adam. <laughs> Congratulations, Adam. 
none of it is very interesting. But, like, red laces. Yeah. Except for us, I like to talk about money. <laughs> yeah, numbers and improving projects. Y'all want to stay and hear the budget? I was going to say. <laughs> Nobody's staying. See the finances? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you should put the whole thing on the consent. Don't you want to stay and listen to the finances? Do that one day. Don't move it up. Yeah, we'll just keep talking. You got to take care of it. Age back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's some really important business. Wait. I think we're... We're good? Okay. So item three, consent agenda. I haven't heard any uh, requests to remove every, anything. Motion to approve the consent agenda as is. I second the motion. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4A, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for a new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone flex 18 project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract documents. Dr. Stockton. Okay, easy. Foster, would you come and present that item, please? President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward tonight for your consideration and approval. A guaranteed maximum price amendment for our new intermediate school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, which we'll refer to as Flex 18. On August 18th, uh, we, the district, selected Marshall Construction to be our construction manager at risk for a new intermediate school, Flex 18. Since then, we've advertised and taken bids from the trade market. And based on Marshall Construction's proposal for this work, we've negotiated a guaranteed maximum price for Flex 18 of $25 million. $491,428. Our outside counsel is preparing our contract documents, and at this time we're requesting your approval. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. Nope. All those I, I'm oh. sorry. I have, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just yeah, trying to catch up. Right? I almost missed it. Sorry <laughs> about that. So the, the Flex 18, the one question I had was about size. Will it be a K through 5 or K through 6? All right, I'm sorry, Flex okay, four, uh, I'm six. sorry, five, six. Five, six. Five, that's six. what I meant. Intermediate. Sorry. It'd be four, five, six? Or five, 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 six. Five, six. Five, six. Okay. Intermediate. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Um, <coughs> item 4B, consider approval for the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the district-wide safety and security upgrades project phase two. <laughs> At this time, I request your approval of Phase 2 uh, GMP for our district-wide safety and security pr uh, project. Uh, back in March of 2016, we selected Ellisor Constructors to be our construction manager at risk for our district-wide safety and security project. The project's set up for phasing so we can use lessons learned from each phase as we move forward into uh, future phases and better facilitate working throughout the district. Uh, during phase one, we didn't expend all of our allowances, contingencies, and realize a little bit of savings. So a portion of this is funded from that amount from okay. phase one. So using that uh, as part of the funding, the total GMP for phase two is $3,914,677. At this time, our outside council is preparing those documents, and we're requesting your approval. All right. Motion? So, Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? I have, a, again, I have a question. Will this complete the safety and security of all the vestibules? Um, not exactly. I didn't uh, think so. That's what, uh, what will be left, I guess. I'm trying to, and how well, did we decide which ones would and wouldn't be a part of this? I'm, I understand that. Well, uh, in phase one, we tried to get the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest right. vestibules exactly. to secure. I remember that. And we did 17 of those last, uh, last in phase one. Right. Phase two, there's only five security vestibules, but we're now going back to get more of the low-hanging fruit for cameras and other things. Okay. Plus, as we're doing capital improvements at other campuses with other contracts, we're also carrying a lot of the scope for the safety and security okay. upgrades there. That's, that's so we're answer, trying to be efficient as we go yeah. through. So, right. Okay, you answered my question. Because So as we do the other capital projects, we're just including that as a part of that safety and security. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. When's your start date and when, when you, how long does the project usually take? Um, well, these projects uh, are, are fluid. They do their work overnight. Um, and so they're working through. They, we've got uh, 16 or 15 campuses to work on in phase two. 
And as soon as we get the contract documents in, the bonds settled, everything in, they'll go to work immediately in okay. the overnight. So you don't need to wait till summertime. You y'all start. No, uh, a lot of this work is above ceiling. They can do work, clean up, and be gone before school starts the next day. Okay. okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right. Anything else? Sure. All right. All those opposed? Or all those in favor? <laughs> you can do it that way too. <laughs> all those opposed. All right. Motion passes. Capital improvement update, Mr. Foster. At this time, I'd like to bring you an update on our capital improvements that we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start you with uh, College Park, which is our robotics uh, project. This one's one that each month I've been reporting the rain and weather has been uh, a severe detriment here. The rain leading up to spring break did actually influence our ability to receive furniture and all that over spring break. Uh, since then, over the break, since we did have some good weather, we did get the building in a dry condition. So what you're seeing here are the windows installed, the brickwork, the scaffolding is in place, and things are starting to progress uh, with the sun shining. So the, the north face of the building, which, which faces 242, is, is also scaffolded and ready. The windows are in, roof is done, things of that nature. So the work on the inside is actually progressing at a rapid rate. So what we're looking at now is a white box getting ready for paint and other finishes to go in. We were uh, there on our last tour. It was quite impressive. I, I appreciate that, and I know the contractor will as well. Now, the interesting part, since we have had weather issues, all of the materials needed to complete this project are on site. I mean, so we're not waiting on carpet, not waiting on windows, not waiting on doors. Everything is ready. So as they're uh, finishing the project, it will, it will proceed rapidly from this point. At our network operations center, which is our data infrastructure for the entire district, uh, the data center itself is nearing its uh, stage where we're uh, getting ready to install the racks and all the other nice things that hold uh, switch gears and, and or switches and network operating gear for us. We spent the break uh, doing a lot of electrical infrastructure work on the building itself. Uh, we did run this run this building on generator power for four days during the during the week of spring break, and so we were able to get a lot of the original switch gear that's original to this building replaced in in that preparation. Now we're working with the utility company to upgrade our transformer, upgrade our utilities, the building to accommodate the, the, this new data center. Uh, the project is on schedule. You're looking now, the, the finishes are coming along in the offices and corridors and other things. Uh, so we are nearing the time over the next couple months, we'll be receiving the technology equipment itself, working on the install and getting the backup generators and things of that nature installed and wired up. On our life cycle 2017 project, uh, this one had no picture, pictures up until this month. Uh, now we're actively roofing two buildings, uh, Gladys Elementary and Bush Elementary are receiving new roof. Uh, so you're seeing the materials were staged. They've been working in the overnight hours from 3.30 to about 10.30. Uh, during spring break, they did work during the day. We're going back to the overnight hours uh, this week. So those roofs are progressing as we would expect them with those type of working conditions. We've also, over spring break, redid the cafetorium floors at two of our elementary schools, at Creighton Elementary and again at Anderson Elementary. So those were replacing rubber floors that were at the end of their life cycle. And these are multi-use spaces. So they see cafeteria tables, PE classes, things of that nature. So the new floors were uh, indeed needed. Uh, in addition to that, we also did the structural coating and are getting ready to restripe the track at Caney Creek and did some work for the softball program at Caney Creek High School. At Knox Junior High and the Woodlands Transportation Center project, uh, at Knox we're adding a 10 classroom science edition. So over spring break, we got the foundations completely installed, the slab board, as you're seeing here. Uh, the work at the field house, which is expanding the showers and other facilities to ma match the student population at that school, is progressing well. They started drilling the foundations for the building extension today. Over at the Transportation Center, the inside of the existing building is nearing the point where we're getting ready for finishes. They drilled the foundations for that building expansion today as well. That project overall is on schedule, scheduled to turn over for students to use in August of this coming summer. Our safety and security project, phase one is what we're complete. Our, our team, technology, and our contract are still commissioning. Uh, we installed uh, a lot of cameras and front door entries at 17 locations. So they're in the process of commissioning each one of those camera views. There are approximately a thousand cameras installed. So it's a, a bit of a tedious task to get that all online and working. Now, we just approved phase two. So phase two, I'll get you a generic picture of one of our programs for to talk about progress for that next month. 
at Lucille Bradley Elementary. That's uh, Flex 17. It opens in August of 2017. This project is on schedule, uh, scheduled to turn over for us to occupy and furnish uh, this summer, early in the summer in June. Uh, so the project is right where we would expect it to be. Uh, the roofing, the materials are complete. The brickwork and masonry is worked all the way around to the front door. And the masonry is expected to be finished in the next 30 days. On the inside, the finishes, the casework, the cabinets, the light fixtures, the ceilings, all those things are coming in. They're beginning the process of, of uh, operating and starting the air conditioning systems and all the other systems going in. Technology goes in in April, and then we'll work to work to get it ready for occupancy uh, through May and into June. As you can see, it is coming along very well. It is cleaning up nicely, and everything is progressing just as we would expect. At Grand Oaks High School, this project is also on schedule, scheduled to open for students in August of 2018. Uh, you can see here the building structure, as we reported last month, is largely complete. The roofing section and at the front in the three-story academic wing is complete, and they're working the roof back towards the uh, fine arts and athletics areas of the building towards the rear of the site. And the athletics infrastructure is also going beginning over the next month or so. So you'll start seeing the football fields develop, the softball fields, and those things over the next several weeks. Inside that building, those building systems are coming together. So the mechanical equipment, the piping systems, the block work, the corridors, the classrooms, the admin areas. What we're looking at here is a, is a peak from up high into our CTE area uh, for one of the, one of the computer labs uh, that will be serving our students. And then on the other, from another perspective, we're looking kind of back into our fine arts area. We're looking into the band and, and uh, uh, practice areas where we're going to see a lot of our fine arts students develop. And that is our update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Thank you. <coughs> Item 5A, finance reports. Dr. Stockton. Darren Rice, please. You can hear the excitement about your financial I know, I was reports. Yeah. Talking about excited. Should we invite them back in? Yeah, it's just for you. Uh, good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure pr to present the financial statements for the district for the month of February. Uh, these statements will include our general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And look at the detail here. We're concentrating on the general fund. We have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $345,000. We have investments in our pools of $208 million. Uh, other investments are investments less than a year of $73.5 million and our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.1 million for total cash and investments of $333.5 million. Property taxes, I always like to look at our tax collection progress, 96.02%. We're ahead of where we were last year, so feeling really good about our collections. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures, Revenues include local and intermediate sources. The largest items in there are tax revenues that we receive for the general fund and debt service fund. We have state program revenues, federal program revenues. And then we can also look, if I can find my cursor, here it is, at our year-to-date expenditures by major category for each of the funds. In the general fund, of course, the largest expenditure is payroll. backwards there. Uh, projected fund balance for the general fund has not changed from last month, about an increase of about $5.1 million. Uh, same for debt service, we're looking at an increase of about $882,000 and a slight increase in child nutrition of $81,000. Our 2015 bond referendum status update, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $248.5 million. We have an estimate to complete of $268.8 million, giving us a project forecast of $517.3 million, leaving us with about $2.9 million worth of contingency. Self-funded insurance, once again, we had another good month in February. We had total revenues of 
$3,799,000. Total expenses of $3,029,000. For revenues over expenses, $769,000. For the year, our revenues over expenses are $3.2 million. And as y'all know, if we stop the plan right now, we would have runoff of about $4.6 million. So our goal was to make the, the fund sound. So we're about $1.4 million short of that goal, but we're, tra we're trekking the right way. Our investments for the month. At the end of the month, our par value was $602 million. The wham of our pools was one day, and they're yielding 88 and a half basis points. The wham of our other investments, once again, this is our shorter term investments, a year or less, is 133 days. 133 days, and we're yielding 1.16%. Our wham of, uh, with TCG Investment Advisors. Um, is 550 days. This is our longer term investments and they're yielding 1.10%. So the WAM of the combined portfolio is 60 days and we're yielding 94 basis points. And our benchmark, which is the 90 day T bill, is at 50 basis points. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Any questions? Thank you. Item 6, Executive Session, we uh, already took care of naming the principals, so we get to move forward to Item 8A, Consider Local Policy Manual Update, Ms. Gladys. Thank you, President Bush. As you know, you received Update 107 to review over a spring break, which I know you all poured over in great detail. Yeah. Um, and so I probably won't be telling you anything you didn't already know. Um, the majority of changes are to legal policies, which is typical of our updates these days. Uh, the majority of these changes are from new um, administrative code regulations and further implementation of the Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, one of the provisions from Every Student Succeeds that's impacting several policies is the requirement that all schools have policies that prohibit an employee um, from doing anything to enable another employee, a former employee, or a contractor from getting a job in another capacity um, if, the, if uh, the current employee has any reason to believe or knowledge that that employee has engaged in sexual misconduct with a student or minor. And so those provisions have been added to uh, local, legal and local policies. Another uh, policy impacted by this update is DBD. That is the Employee Conflicts of Interest policy. It contains a myriad of provisions to deal with conflicts. Um, the change to this one deals with um, holding civil office. They added further detail to clarify that teachers, retired teachers, retired school administrators aren't prohibited by the Texas Constitution from holding office like on a city or a government board. Um, typically, the prohibition would be if you get some of your income from Texas funds, you couldn't serve on a, a board like that, but they have an exception for mm -hmm. educators who are retired serving on, on boards of that type. Um, DBD is also, you know, the policy that deals with conflicts of interest, and it um, explains and the legal requirements that prohibit vendors from giving gifts to employees, and that prohibits employees or members of employees' families from accepting gifts from vendors. Um, all the changes to local policies are detailed in your agenda item, and so if you have any questions about those, I'd be happy to answer them. And then there's two additional policies I'd like to point out. As you know, you all approved the district becoming a district of innovation, and as a result of that, we had to make some changes or add a couple policies. One is saying that we are a district of innovation. That's an AF. And finally, EB, which is the policy that talks about when the start date of the school year is under state law. Since we are exempting ourselves from that, that policy will now contain a link to our District of Innovation Plan, which is on the website, so that anybody looking at that policy could go right there and find what, what rule applies to us now. So we'll be bringing back, I, and I told you in um, the, the note I sent you when I sent you this, that staff is still reviewing the changes. I, th I don't think we're mm -hmm. gonna have very many, but if there are additional, I will send them to you prior to the April meeting, because at that meeting, we'll be asking you to adopt the local policies contained in 107. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, any questions? Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs>